Okay, okay, okay. What's good, people? It's Man Like Jamo. We're out here with the AR Neo 2. And we're gonna have a little real talks about what this games console has been like one month later. Now, just in the interest of transparency and all them things there, I came up from the Steam Deck and I begged a Neo to send me down the a Neo 2 so that man could give it a little review, innit? Now, cool, they sent it down and that, but that's all they did. They didn't pay for this review. They didn't pay for anything. They didn't even ask me to do this follow-up review that I'm doing. This is just something I needed to get off of my chest because I feel like when it first came out, I was kind of singing its praises. And now that I've had some time to properly deep the device, there's a couple things I want you guys to know before you even think about spending your money on this thing. Yeah, so physically, everything was cool, innit? Like the screen is calm, the buttons are calm, the console itself is calm. Nothing is really falling apart or nothing is warping. Um, no scratches or madness going on with the device itself. Like buttons feel as clicky as they did on day one. I haven't got any issues with the build quality. And to be honest, at this price, I better not have any issues with the build quality. Now where Man Man is really having issues with this AI Neo 2 is the software fam. The drivers, all that stuff that goes on behind the scenes, isn't it? First off, the biggest major issue that I even went to Twitter about is the fact that I seem to develop some kind of issue on my device where it was just ignoring the drivers for the screen and for the GPU. Now, as you guys already know, it's a 1920 by 1200 screen, isn't it? Seven inches. And the GPU itself is an AMD 6800M. Please tell me why when I was going to device manager, none of those devices were coming up. It said that my screen was 24 inches generic display. And it said that my graphics driver was also a generic graphics driver. Furthermore, when I went to the AI Neo website to download the correct up-to-date drivers, it just wasn't working. No nothing was working at all. Now, to solve this problem, I had to make a bootable Windows 11 USB disk in it. After I made that, I completely removed Windows from the AI Neo and made a completely fresh reinstall. Now, once I got everything up and running, man created the system restore point so that I knew if it matched up again, I could go back to my system restore point in it. Two twos, I'm minding my own business and the same thing happens again. The system completely starts to disregard the screen driver and the graphics card driver. And obviously when this happens, it means that you can't play games because there's no graphics card. You can't change the resolution because the the console doesn't know what screen is in the console and you can't go down a resolution to like 12 by 800 for example and you can't change the screen brightness either because it doesn't realize that the screen has a brightness slider built Ugh, it's just all mad so yeah that happened again but because i created a system restore point when i reinstalled windows i was able to go back to that system restore point and keep it moving now since then this problem hasn't happened again i haven't been able to recreate this screen problem so i'm hoping it's not going to do that again but at least i've got the system restore point there in place to stop it next issue that i'm having with this AI neo is the throttling now I know when you put the TDP up to maximum, you're basically asking for maximum performance, but you're also asking for the console to get as hot as possible. I get it. However, how can I be playing Harry Potter at 28 watts TDP for about half an hour? And then randomly from getting like 45 frames per second steady, I start getting 10 frames per second and the TDP automatically lowers itself down to 10 watts. What, what is that? What, why? Why does it do that? And I had 55% battery. This has happened before, but I thought it was because my battery was extremely low that this is why this was happening. But no matter if you plug the console in, whatever you do, you're not gonna get any more TDP once it's being throttled. This just proper ruins the console-like gaming experience for me because it means that I can't trust this console to just run a game without having any issues. I can trust my Nintendo Switch, I can trust my PS Vita, I can even trust my Steam Deck, but I cannot trust this console to be the only console I'm taking out to like go on a holiday trip somewhere. I've told a Neo about the throttling situation and all they've said is turn down the TDP, which in that case is like, so what's the point of being able to turn it up? It's not like I'm overclocking. It's designed to take up to 28 watt, is it not? If I was overclocking, I'd be like, okay, I'm doing more than the system should be doing. But the fact that the TDP switch is there don't make no sense to me. Another issue is the Air Neo store. And they got a couple of few apps on there. None of them are in English. 
and what I've noticed about 90% of the apps is that most of them will not work unless you launch the game through the ANEO app space, which is on and off with whether it wants to work or not. Battery life is battery life. Um, it was terrible when I first got it. Everyone has said it's terrible. You get like maximum two hours. Two hours of good solid gameplay, I would accept that. But getting half an hour of good solid gameplay and then getting another one hour and a half of throttled gameplay, cut that out, man, cut that out. And also I'm just seeing here issues with getting logged in to the console in the first place, fam. Now this might be a Windows thing, but I've noticed that sometimes the fingerprint sensor won't work or sometimes the fingerprint sensor won't work and the touchscreen won't work with the touchpad for me to key in my pin instead. So it means that I have to connect an external keyboard to get signed in. Again, I explained the situation to a and Neo and all they said was plug in an external keyboard. So does that mean that when I bring my a and Neo with me, I also need to bring an external keyboard so that I can enjoy the device? It just sounds a bit counterproductive to me. And I'm like that, you know like that. Apart from that, I ain't got no much issues with this thing, you know? I mean, those are pretty big issues, but if those things would just be cleared up, premium level console, this thing fam, this AI Neo 2. I love the fact that we've got native Windows running on it so that when man wants to install a game, I just install the game, yeah? If it's on Uplay, if it's on EA Origin, if it's on Epic Games, there's no farcing with Epic with Steam OS, none of that. I just install and we keep it going fam, you know like that, wicked. I also like the fact that it's got extra power over the Steam Deck to help it run games more efficiently, but then at what cost are you getting that extra power when the system seems to just start randomly throttling to stop it from overheating? I don't know guys, it's a sticky one. It's a sticky one because it is a very good computer. Like it's a very, very good computer. But as a games console, yeah, it's a bit sticky guys.